Hello, I'm Bill McCowan, Superintendent of Gordon County Schools. Gordon County Schools is located in Gordon County, Georgia. We're 60 minutes north of Atlanta and 45 minutes south of Chattanooga, Tennessee. That makes us the last rural school district on I-75 between Chattanooga and Atlanta. We have abundant natural resources, and among those most precious valuable resources are the 7,000 children that we serve. We're focused on engaging work for our students, as evidenced by our charter. We are a state charter school system in the state of Georgia. We are the first district in the state of Georgia to be involved with the redesign project sponsored by the Page Foundation. Additionally, we have a college and career academy, the Gordon County College and Career Academy sponsored by 68 businesses in North Georgia and Tennessee, where the focus is a relevant, rigorous results-based education made possible through nurturing relationships and high-wage, high-demand, high-skill jobs for our students. We're about supporting students and preparing them for the future in Gordon County. Hello, I'm Bill McCowan, Superintendent, Gordon County Schools in Gordon County, Georgia where we are about a relevant, rigorous, results-based education made possible through nurturing relationships. Our focus is always on student and student achievement. However, the video today is about building relationships with adults, the adults that care for our children. You'll find the information you need in this video to be helpful to you as you begin your career with Gordon County Schools. We look forward to you joining our team, Team Gordon, and if you're viewing this video as an update, we thank you for pressing forward for student success in Gordon County. Thank you so much for supporting Team Gordon and our children. Hi, I'm Susan Call, Director of Human Resources for Gordon County Schools, and I welcome you to our school system. This presentation will highlight the opportunities available to Gordon County employees, communicate compensation and benefits information, and summarize Gordon County Board of Education policies and procedures. Complete policy and procedure manuals are available on the GCBE website, www.gcbe.org. Your supervisor can advise you of their location at your work site. As is characteristic of all dynamic organizations, changes in policies and procedures will occur. These changes are communicated to all employees in an effort to keep you fully informed about matters that affect you on the job. I urge you to read the personnel handbook and other information available to you as you take steps to become an engaged employee. Thank you for being a part of Team Gordon and for all that you will do to support the students of Gordon County. Of course, I'm available by email or phone call if you have any questions about this presentation. Thank you and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Hi, I'm Susan Call, Director of Human Resources for Gordon County Schools. And I'm going to take an opportunity to talk to you about the Code of Ethics, which governs the professional behavior of educators in Georgia and serves as a guide to ethical conduct. The Professional Standards Commission has adopted standards that represent the conduct generally accepted by the education profession. The code defines unethical conduct, justifying disciplinary sanction, and provides guidance for protecting the health safety and general welfare of students and educators and assuring the citizens of Georgia a degree of accountability within the education profession. There are 11 standards that I'm going to be referring to uh, as I go through this presentation and please know that all the information is included on the Georgia Professional Standards Commission website at www.gapsc.com. Standard 1, Legal Compliance. An educator shall abide by federal, state, and local laws and statutes. Standard 2, Conduct with students. An educator shall always maintain a professional relationship with all students both in and outside the classroom. Standard 3, alcohol or drugs. An educator shall refrain from the use of alcohol or illegal or unauthorized drugs during the course of professional practice. Standard four, honesty. An educator shall exemplify honesty and integrity in the course of professional practice. Standard five, public funds and property. An educator educator entrusted with public funds and property shall honor that trust with a high level of honesty, accuracy, and responsibility. Standard six, 
An educator shall maintain integrity with students, colleagues, parents, patrons, or businesses when accepting gifts, gratuities, favors, and additional compensation. Standard 7, confidential information. An educator shall comply with state and federal laws and state school board policies relating to the confidentiality of student and personnel records, standardized test material, and other information. Standard 8, abandonment of contract. An educator should fulfill all the terms and obligations detailed in the contract under the local board of education or education agency for the duration of the contract. Standard 9, required report. An educator should file reports of a breach of one or more of the standards in the Code of Ethics for Educators, Child Abuse, or any other required report. Standard 10, professional conduct. An educator shall demonstrate conduct that follows generally recognized professional standards and preserves the dignity and integrity of the teaching profession. In standard 11, testing, an educator shall administer state mandated assessments fairly and ethically at all times. These 11 standards, as I said earlier, are governed by the Professional Standards Commission of the State of Georgia. If you have any questions about that, certainly you can visit their website, again, at www.gapsc.com, or certainly you can call my office. Hello and welcome to Gordon County Schools. My name is Jeff Clance and I have the pleasure of serving as the Director of Student Services for the system. I want to spend a little time talking with you about mandated reporting, allergies, the student code of conduct and bullying, as well as information about the student services staff both at the school and the district level. To begin with mandated reporting, the rates of child abuse and neglect in Georgia continue to increase across the state and we as educators need to be aware of the issues surrounding this problem so that we can address them accordingly in the system. I want to give you a little information regarding child abuse statistics, some reasons that people may abuse, definitions of abuse, some physical and behavioral indicators that you can be aware of that may help you to identify cases of abuse in the school, information about proper disclosure, as well as mandated reporting laws and the role of school personnel in making child abuse referrals. In Georgia, once every 30 minutes, a child is a victim or confirmed victim or of abuse or neglect, with 66% of child deaths related to abuse and neglect were determined to be preventable. The majority of the maltreaters are parents of the child. Nationally, over half of all victims are under the age of seven, and over 75% of child fatalities reported as a result of child abuse and neglect occur in children under the age of four. 73% of children who were sexually abused had their abuse last more than five years. Many factors can contribute to abuse and neglect, but some that you may need to be aware of as you work with these children each day in your classrooms consist of parent or caregiver immaturity, unrealistic expectations when a student may be expected to be achieving very high, but just is not making the grade according to the parent. Frequent crises in the home, which there may be a job loss by one or, one or more of the parents, homelessness, or issues related to finances, as well as mental illness and poor family boundaries. The types of abuse that you need to be aware of include physical abuse, neglect, sexual abuse, and emotional abuse. Physical abuse consists of visible bruises and welts on a child, fractures, cuts, scratches, or abrasions, as well as burns that you may notice on a child's arms, legs, about their face, back, anywhere that you can physically observe a bruise or a welt. Neglect consists of hunger, poor hygiene, or inappropriate dress. If you have a student who consistently talks about not having food at home, or if you notice that in the lunchroom they tend to want to get food from other students while they're eating, you may have a situation of neglect in this case. Sexual abuse, a student may exhibit difficulty walking or sitting, 
They may disclose to the school nurse that they have a sexually transmitted disease, or there may be an incident where a student becomes pregnant, pregnant as a result of the sexual abuse. Emotional abuse, when we consider this type of abuse, we need to look at speech disorders, delays in physical development, and failure to thrive. What to do when a child discloses. In the event that a child comes to you to indicate that they may be abused or report an issue that's happened in their home, first find a private place to talk and assure the child that you're there to help them. Listen very calmly and openly to what they have to say. Write down any facts or specific statements they make about the incident and report the disclosure to the designated reporter in your school. In our system, that designated reporter is the school counselor in each of our schools. Most of all, respect the child's need for confidentiality. Let them know that you will keep the information private and that you will only share that information with people who need to know. What not to say when a child discloses information regarding some type of abuse. Don't ask why questions. Don't make the statement, are you sure this is happening? Children are trusting you and want to know that you're there to help them. Don't ask, are you telling the truth? And let me know if this happens again. Also, don't make the statement, what did you do to make this happen? Doing so would put the child in a situation where they felt like they had no one to trust at school, and in the event that things happen in the future, they would be less likely to disclose that information. Types of disclosure that students can have Making indirect hints, they could also have disguised disclosure if they approach you and say, well, I know a friend that is having this problem at home. What do you think they should do? And they can have disclosures with strings attached, such as I need to tell you something, but I don't want you to tell anyone else. Let those students know that there are things that you do have to report to others, and it's only done in order to keep them safe. Who must report? Under Georgia law, all school personnel who come in contact with children are required to report any suspected child abuse that they are aware of. That includes custodians, certified staff, secretaries, bus drivers, as well as administrators. It requires that those individuals make that report to the identified reporter in their school, which is the school counselor, within 24 hours of having knowledge of the report. When you suspect a child is being abused, report your concerns to the designated reporter in your school as soon as possible and follow up your, with your designated reporter to assure that the report is made. If you have concerns that the report is not made, you can certainly, as a certified educator, make that report on your own. What are your rights as a mandated reporter in Georgia? Your first right is that of confidentiality. All the reports you made are confidential and your name will be kept anonymous unless that should proceed to a court hearing in which you may be called to testify as the initial reporter in the case. You will be given knowledge of the outcome of the report in that you will be advised if it was a substantiated or unsubstantiated report, but you will not be given information about the details of the investigation. Since 2007, all elementary schools in Gordon County Schools have been peanut-free campuses. And this is in our response to be proactive in addressing the needs of those students with allergies. School nurses have taken the initiative and continue to work with parents, school staff, and students to develop individual medical plans to address these allergies and frequently update, do, update these throughout the year to make sure they're in compliance with what physicians have requested that students be provided on campus. Recently, as of 2011, the Georgia General Assembly passed legislation that indicates that students are allowed to carry EpiPens on campus as long as they have a physician's approval, as well as educators and other certified staff are allowed to administer these EpiPens in the event of an allergic reaction. And as part of that, anyone who administers an EpiPen during a crisis event or an allergic reaction event is not held liable for that emergency situation, no matter the outcome. 
Students are allowed to carry those on the Gordon County Schools campus and our nurses are developing and implementing procedures for them to have those available to them as well as have those in the clinic should there arise an emergency when the student doesn't have them on their person. Also in 2011, the General Assembly passed some stricter bullying laws in which the bullying statute now applies to all students in grades K through 12. Previously, it had only applied to students in grades 6 through 12. The Code of Conduct specifically details the bullying policy as well as outlines the procedure for investigating bullying, bullying reports from any member of the school community, that being from the school staff, a parent, or student. Students who receive the third bullying referral in a school year are placed in the alternative school through a tribunal action, and teachers and staff have an obligation to report observed instances of bullying to the administration. Currently, at the school level, the student services staff consists of school counselors, graduation coaches, school nurses, family advocates, and the school resource officers. Each of these individuals works together as a team to address the needs, both emotional, social, academic, and career guidance goals of students so that we can ensure their success and graduation from Gordon County Schools. At the central office level, as I said before, I have the pleasure of serving as the Director for Student Services and have the opportunity to be assisted by our school social worker, Ms. Whitney Carnes, our lead school nurse, Ms. Courtney Temples, our bilingual resource coordinator, Ms. Luzavinda Luna, our family engagement coordinator, Mr. Tony Waters, and the administrative assistant for our department, Ms. Lucia Easton. We look forward to working with you as the year progresses. And should you need any help, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.